So that's going to be our adventure for this winter, starting off already. Um, so basically this show is about stormwater, and I'm going to show um, something uh, eventually. I'm going to just basically do a rundown of what stormwater is. Um, stormwater is a term used to describe water that originates during precipitation events. So that could be rain, sleet, snow, or hail. We had a pretty um, wet summer uh, with a lot of um, uh, uh, precipitation. And so we do have that pre uh, prediction that I just read off for this winter. And so um, hopefully uh, this will be a public public service. Um, this show, the part one, and then part two, when Bill Stowe, an expert in that field, is actually in the studio. Storm water um, that does not soak into the ground is known as surface off, and that flows into surface waterways. It's channeled into sewers, um, where it eventually joins surface water. And two main concerns for storm water are flood control and then water pollution that gets washed into the um, water system. His, a history of stormwater uh, is pretty intriguing. Um, there's stormwater engineering that was evident in ancient Greece. Um, an archaeological recovery was done at the Manoan uh, Pahestos at Crete showing um, stormwater engineering. Um, stormwater runs off impervious surfaces um, like parking lots and roads and buildings and also compacted soil. Uh, the rain, for those reasons, does not infiltrate the ground. Um, and for this reason, developed areas usually generate more runoff than rural areas because um, the developed areas are largely concrete or hard surfaces. And so runoff has um, mostly been a modern uh, phenomenon when there was more rural, when there were more rural regions um, in you know, around the U.S. Uh, it wasn't quite the, the issue that it is today. And then also greenhouse um, uh, or greenhouse gas and global warming. Uh, that's an, another show. <laughs> um, pollution is spread by the runoff um, that comes from roads and lawns and roofs and farm fields. So whatever chemical is put on those surfaces or you know, either put on the surfaces or accidentally gets on the surface of that, those um, areas like the roads and lawns and roofs and farm fields, it does run off into the water system. And then it enters our rivers and our lakes and our oceans. Um, before um, advanced human development, most of the rainfall soaked into the ground and it contributed to the groundwater recharge. It was recycled into the atmosphere by vegetation through evapotranspiration. What is evapotranspiration? It's um, what happens when a plant tries to cool itself in extreme temperatures. Um, for instance, um, Des Moines is very humid, although there isn't like a tremendous body of water, say like Lake Michigan or one of the great other Great Lakes. Um, the air feels, feels humid because of the farm fields of corn that we have and soybeans, which do their evapotranspiration at a pretty um, high level, and it actually changes the the humidity um, of the air. It's pretty interesting. Um, uh, modern drainage systems um, collect runoff from in, those impervious surfaces, and they convey the the runoff to waterways via pipe networks. And it increases the waterway flow, which also contains a higher amount of pollutants. Uh, it contributes to st uh, stream erosion, and it interrupts the growth of native species. And per James Patchett, a civil hydrolo tri hydrologist, hydrologist, plants grow into the habitats to which they're adapted. And I did attend... Uh, um, a program where he spoke and where he said that um, pollution changes the environment and it encourages weed invasion and so that's how runoff one way runoff affects our environment um, per Wayne Peterson at the same event I attended he's an urban conservationist Iowa is a quote 
hydraulically dysfunctional landscape, end quote. And I'll show the program that I attended. Um, it's right here. And this paper is very wrinkled because I've been carrying it around. Um, but basically it's a program given by the Center on Sustainable Communities. It was the Day of Sustainability, Resource, Resourceful Stormwater Solutions. And that program was heavily attended. There were a lot of people. They had to actually change the venue because so many people signed up to learn about stormwater and solutions. Um, some of, and I'll get to some of the solutions later. But I was, I was surprised, and I think they were surprised too, but in a very pleasant way that so many people showed an interest in addressing um, stormwater issues and how to manage stormwater. Um, some of the goals of stormwater management include uh, con the control of flooding and erosion, the control of the release of hazardous materials and pollutants, uh, the construction of stormwater systems to remove contaminants, protection of surface and groundwater, the protection of natural waterways, and to build ponds, swales, or wetlands to work with pipes and concrete channels and to revise stormwater regulations as needed, and to enhance or enforce existing ordinances for property owner, owners, and then to educate the community. And so the um, Center on Sustainable Communities um, um, workshop was one such um, um, attempt to educate the community. Um, and it was a great workshop. I came away with a lot of information. I think the there were probably more than 100 people there. Um, I'm not sure of the exact number, but there's just a lot of people. Um, there are also some green stormwater management solutions. Um, one is called integrated water management, and that's an effort to improve runoff quality and to re reduce the risk and impact of flooding and to deliver additional um, potable water resources. And there are several techniques uh, to manage water, uh, particularly stormwater. Uh, one is stormwater harvest, uh, infiltration, biofiltration or bioretention, and that's rain gardens. Uh, rain gardens are a way to plant native species to encourage the stormwater to soak into the ground instead of creating a hard surface. And there have, has been some new construction in the downtown Des Moines area, which of course is covered with a lot of concrete, but some of the newer construction have made efforts to green uh, the area um, to create a, a, a place where the stormwater can soak into the ground. And there's an IJOPS project, and I didn't know the street, but it is in downtown Des Moines. And then also, I think, I believe the Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield um, uh, building across from the city library um, created a green space that will hopefully help with stormwater management. Um, another solution are, uh, is retention ponds uh, and bioswales and infiltration trenches. Um, another um, really interesting type of uh, solution is sustainable pavements, and that means pervious concrete or asphalt, where instead of being hard, um, a, a hard surface where there's a, a lot of runoff, uh, this will be pervious where the runoff can actually soak into the concrete. And this is per Tom Brownlow, who actually spoke at that um, Center on Sustainable Community Stormwater Program. He's an administrator for Charles City, and they implemented a 16-block porous paver system in a historic neighborhood, and that was based on design by Portland, Oregon. I was kind of worried when he told me it was from Portland, Oregon, um, that design, because unlike Iowa, Portland does not freeze, even though it's, you know, further north, um, the weather system, because it's in a valley between two mountain chains, um, it doesn't freeze uh, very often in Portland over the winter. But someone else brought that up and somehow they were able to make it work and they do regular maintenance on that, on their um, porous paver system. 
Another um, solution are green roofs, which have really taken off in the city of Chicago.